Now that our new load, so here, uh, I'll draw it as a, an equivalent circuit. So we will have our new load is equal to 16.8 ohms. So that's our input impedance at this location. So now that ZL, our new ZL here, is a real number, we can consider special distances where either the cosine or the sine terms go to zero for our input impedance. The input impedance I just had on the previous slide. For example, the first, the first time one of those terms goes to zero is when D is equal to lambda over four when the transmission line length is one quarter of a wavelength long. If you plug that into our Zn equation, uh, well first we're going to need a value for beta d, which is two pi over lambda times lambda over four, which is pi over two. So when the, then the cosine terms go to zero, and we wind up with Z in is equal to Z naught, times zero plus j z naught over zero plus j z l, which is equal to z naught squared over z l. What this means is that for this length of transmission line, the input impedance only depends on the load impedance, z l, and the characteristic impedance of the quarter wavelength section of transmission line. Since we said d is equal to lambda over four, that's a quarter wavelength. Now in our case, we want z in, we want this to equal 70 ohms. Z L we already have determined is 16.8 ohms. So the only value we can play around with here is z naught. The characteristic impedance of the quarter wave transformer. If we rearrange the equation and solve for Z naught, the characteristic impedance of the quarter wave transformer, we get Z naught is equal to the square root of Z in times Z L, and that would equal 34.3 ohms. This means that if we have our antenna, ZL equals 35 minus J 70 ohms at the end of a transmission line, and we connect it here to a section of transmission line with Z naught equals to 70 ohms, and the length here is 0.365 lambda, then we can connect that to a section of transmission line that is a quarter wavelength long and has a characteristic impedance of 34.3 ohms. Then at that point, if we do those two sections of transmission lines, the input impedance here, all that together, Z in would equal 70 ohms, which equals this, the rest of the transmission line, which is 70 ohms. As a result, since we're using two different Z knots here, two different types of transmission lines, it, that's why you can see in this graph or diagram there's Z knot one and Z knot two, that's, and Z knot one again, that's differentiate between the two characteristic impedances. There's 70 ohms, 34.3 ohms, and 70 ohms again. Now it's your turn to design a quarter wave transformer. Determine Z naught two. The characteristic impedance of a quarter wave, trans quarter wave section of transmission line that will match a 65 ohm load to a feed line with a characteristic impedance of Z naught one, which is equal to 50 ohms.